What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another edition of Uline.life. My name is Isan. Uh, I am your host, and I had a beautiful co-host in the house, Cynthia. Hey, Hello, queen. people. How you doing? Yes. All right. So, you know, as we uh, go on to our new season, I am daring, challenging all the hot spoken word artists across the city. We are giving you guys a platform to do your thing. We're going to get down each edition of Uline.life, okay? So, if you're hot, Make sure you get at us. Of course, 312-738-1060. I need you guys to call on in. And um, without further ado, we're getting ready for another artist to hit the stage. This is the one and only Poetry. Poetry. My life is my poetry. I like my poetry. It's my life. Poetry soul child, y'all. So my life is my poetry. Come on, come on, fam. I like my poetry, it's my life. So my life is my poetry. Yeah. I like my poetry, it's my life. So my life is my poetry. Like my poetry, it's my life. My life is my poetry. Like my poetry is my life. Cause I speak life to preach life and I preach life to teach life and I teach life to reach life is when I reach life, I write life. Mm, come on. Cause all I write about is my life. Cause my life is good. So good like soul food on Sundays. Cause Sundays are my fun days. My fun days with my God each and every Sunday. Mm, so I can on. spit my poetry. Cause my poetry is like flowetry. Cause I use it like music. Music that comes from a melody from heaven. So I can spit my poetry over my music so I can speak life about my life living smart and creative as a poet on fire who desires to go higher cause I'm living my life like it's golden mm. so golden like love, peace and happiness Come on. cause I'm a poet living my life not wasting my life cause why waste my life if God bless you to see life each and every day in my life so I can see with new eyes and hear with new ears and cut loose my stubborn seven to give articulate praise into his name Come on. so I can walk by faith and not by sight, so I can speak life to another life. Mm. And that's why my life is my poetry. Mm. Like my poetry is my life. My life is my poetry. Mm. Like my poetry is my life. Mm. So my life is my poetry. Like my poetry is my life. So my life is my poetry, yeah. I like my poetry, it's my life. So my life is my poetry. Come on, come on. I like my poetry, it's my life. All right, all right, all right. You know, we clap like this. You know, we do the snaps on the table. We give it up for real spoken word. Good job, sir. Mm, appreciate it. That's what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? Come on, move on in. All right. You're part, you're Thank part you so of the dialogue now. So, um, man, I, uh, I was, like I said, I was coming home from the county jail. You know, I was representing, you know, a lot of people. And I get home, I turn on the TV and see my boy, Poetry Soul Chat, on Windy City Live. Yes. And I was just so yes. pleased because, you know, I, I know we go way back, you know what I'm yeah. saying, to all the underground little spots, you know what right. I'm saying? And I think at that time it was out west at the, um, um, what was the spot out west we used to perform at that you had? Uh, hot sauce that? poetry? Hot sauce poetry. Yeah. yeah. Hot sauce yeah. poetry. Yeah. You know, but I mean, even before that, you know, I was getting up, you know, to different spots in Chicago yeah. representing the art and the craft. Yeah. So, man, much love. Thank so, you. right now, Without further ado, what you got coming up? You know, tell the people because a lot of people been hitting me up. You know, they're trying to see what you got going on. Um, and and by the way, that was just one signature piece. He That's has nice. many. Yes. Um, and you definitely can you know get in touch with him. But what you got coming out next? What's going on? Man, what I got coming up, man. I got some different events coming up, you all. Um, actually, next Saturday, April the uh, 27th, I'm going to be featuring at a karaoke spot um, at the Martin Luther King Exhibit. Okay. Ooh. All right. So, y'all definitely want to check that out. Um, also, I've got, um, what I got. Let me see what else I got coming up. Also, what I got coming up is 
And you can still go to Uline.life, you yes, guys, because yes. I will put on there, you know, after work, because I know it's so much coming up, you want to get stuff in order. Yeah. Make sure I get it, because yeah. I'll put a list of all the events, you know, so we can see him. And, you know, the past artists that's been on here, from yes. Black Eyes to Just Mike, you know what I'm saying? Um, my boy, uh, Middle Soul, you know, everybody that we are part of, our big camp, is Uline Grows, you know what I'm saying? We're going to put down the different spots coming up, you know that's what I'm right. saying? So yeah. that's what's up. So, without further ado... You are, you know, our guest for this evening, so you're going to yes. weigh in okay. on our conversation with me and Sent. Okay. Um, we are talking about this evening depression in the hood, meaning depression in, um, in the areas, you know, where people, I guess you could say, you know, the sec secondary, you know what I'm saying, communities where people feel, you know, less um, important, but we are just as important. Absolutely. You know, we might not have as much money as the Lincoln Parks, Absolutely. you know what I'm saying, and um, these other, you know, places, however... We're still affected by what happens around us. Right. So tonight's topic, you guys, is depression. Is it real in, in our communities? I mean, I know we, we're quick to say it is, but we've always had it a little bit harder than anybody else. You know, people that don't have the same bracket of income is what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, is depression real? Absolutely. Cynthia, what do you feel about that? Depression is absolutely real. I mean, when you, especially in uh, West Side, South Side, in the poverty stricken areas when resources are few, um, education is, is, is to a minimum, um, no resources. I mean, at, at what point do you expect a person to escape all the, the, the being in the pit, if I should say? So, you know, and then you go out, like you mentioned earlier, you go out to Leakin Park and all these other places, and it's beautified. They got resources, they got jobs, they got everything. And then just to, um, make mention of the kids that were downtown over 500 right, kids right? right the news lady said she asked one of the kids why are you down here one of the kids said because we have nothing else to do we mm. have nowhere else to go mm. I remember hearing that I remember that that is just <laughs> I mean that says it all right there you know we You're have nothing right. to do and that goes to I mean definitely no resources what do we mean by resources no after school programs no um, special events where people can go to, you know, That's after true. school just to do some stuff, or even when school's not open, you know, and what even saying? after no school, centers. you can't, you can barely afford it. The right. YMCA is two, three hundred dollars. That school program is this amount of money. And when and does, and that's my question. We used to have girls and boys clubs when I was coming up. Can't what happened to the, you know, YMCA? Why are they starting to charge? You know, that's a good question in itself. You know what I'm saying? Um, what do you feel about it? You know, saying poetry, soul child. What What do you feel is yes? You know, that's still ringing in my ear. Right? You know, everybody saying that. They know. Then they walk up to him and they say, "My life is my boy." You know, that's the bomb. Yes, but I appreciate. On, on some real stuff. I mean, so depression in the hood. Yeah. Is it real? First of all, what do you feel as a young brother in the hood? You know what? Depression is real because, um, like you guys were talking about. Um, which you mentioned the youth, and um, I meant to mention, um, you know, depression is real in the hood because our youth don't really have places to go, and there's so much violence going on in the city of Chicago. That's true. And that's why um, I'm glad we're talking about this because um, I got something actually for the youth so that depression yeah. can be, like, eliminated. I also host a U Media Teen Open Mic every first Saturday of the month okay, okay. on the south side of Chicago at the Carter G. Whitson Library on 95th and Hosted. Okay. So it's a program that I always had a vision and dream to awesome. to give the youth a platform to come out and showcase their talent and express themselves. And express themselves. There you go. So I think depression is, is real because you know we need more community centers mm -hmm. in the hood. We need more programs for the youth in the hood. And we just, just violence got to stop, you know. And it's so much um, people selling drugs and stuff out here and stuff. And the youth is getting involved with that as well. And wow. school closings and stuff. So we got to have something for our youth out That's here. True. And I'm glad I'm providing yeah. that platform for the youth. Man, That's awesome. awesome. That's what's up. Um, so we're going to kind of switch the gears just a tad bit to go maybe to a subtopic of depression. Okay. Um, and we, we kind of hit this, you know, saying during our, our season. I want to say this. What do you, and we're talking about couples right now. If your mate, you feel, is going through a depressive period, um, what are some of the signs? How can you tell that your mate, someone that you care about, someone that you, you know, around all the time, or, you know, just your significant other, what are some of the signs that your mate is becoming, or maybe already is, depressed? Cynthia? Um, I would say that a sign would possibly be his mood. Mm. His mood, uh, his mental state of being, and kind of, I would probably say a person that's pretty much standoffish in a sense. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I, I think 
I, his mood would definitely be a part of me questioning. What about in the bedroom? Would that come into play at all? Do you think? Um, absolutely so. Yeah, because mm -hmm. everything you do is mental. You know, it starts mm -hmm. with the mental, and then it goes abroad. Yeah, so if the okay. mental, if the mental isn't focused, I mean, if the mental isn't there, then you pretty much just a walking whatever. Mm, good point. Um, you know, it definitely um controlling, mm -hmm. controlling. Um, I like that. Controlling. Definitely um selfish. So you're saying what the maid would become more of these tributes? Yeah, mm -hmm. I've seen it myself. Okay. So yeah, um, definitely selfish, controlling, um, disrespectful. So that was a way of handling it. You saying? Yeah. Okay. So she was lashing out more. She she changed her vibe by becoming that more moved. controlling. Yes. More moody. The mood. Okay. Yep. Yes. Good. Okay. That's pretty deep. Yeah. Um, Okay, and then again to the floor, you guys, and also at home, you guys, you know, feel to um, call on in. I know some calls have already called in at 312-738-1060. You guys on our live as well, 312-738-1060. Um, tonight, we're talking about depression. You know, what are some of the clues that you can see that your mate or your significant other may have once you see that they've been overcome by depression? Okay, so. I don't think you answered that, sir. <laughs> See, I see. That's why I like her. See, how, you know what I'm saying, kind of <clears throat> with that left jab. Right. You know, I, I think that you know. Let me just say this. I've lived through it before. I've seen my mate become depressed, mm -hmm. and um, I think it also gears to the. You know, it's it's what we call 50-50 relationships. So, say for instance, the days that I felt she was becoming depressed, I would pick her up. I would sit her down. I would show her some of the signs as why. Maybe she was a little... For, for, for me, the women that I've dealt with have always been the opposite. Mm. Instead of being controlling, they may be coming a little bit more isolated. Okay. Mm. You know, they kind of withdraw. And they feel that... Um, they become hurt. You know, women are a little bit more emotional creatures than us. So they come a little bit... Yeah, they're, they're more prone to shut down. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So they yeah. shut down more. And, um, you know, I'd have to sit to them, talk to them, and be like, you know, what are you going through, babe? What's really going on? Talk to me. And she may cry and she may say, you know what I'm saying? I just feel like I'm not worthy enough for you. I may feel like I'm not pulling my weight in this relationship. Mm -hmm. Maybe, I, you know, I, I want to give you so much more, but I can't. You know, I'm minimal. My job only pays this much. I only have this much time. You know, I may feel like someone else is going to scoop you. Right. So it becomes a lack of self-esteem, too. Indeed. Yeah. You know, because Indeed. they feel like they just not cutting it. Not good so, enough for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's what that's kind of where you know I'm going with. Any okay. more things you want to throw to the floor about the press or some of the signs that you may see? Anybody think of any more signs? You guys at home, 312 738 Signs of depression. Signs of depression. What are some of the signs you see that your mate may be going through a depressive state? Okay, so now we're gonna switch it over just a little bit. You guys can still call in to answer that. Um, let's talk about our children, and this is very important. Last night I was on WVON and we were talking about how some of the children in the hood are actually the breadwinners. Isn't that something because, and by of course drugs is what I'm saying, is because the father's gone, he may be locked up, the mother is has now become the father role, so she has to work, mm -hmm. and the kids who don't have any money are actually, you know, falling out to the street because nobody's there to monitor. So they take the love that the streets offers, you know, which of course obviously misguided love, and hit them. And so now the kids are seeing their friends die. They're always, you know, going to these different uh, vigils, you know what I'm saying, where they, you know, they light the candles and they're letting go of the balloons and they're losing friends mm -hmm. and then they're going to school, they're not getting good grades because they're tired because they've been out hustling all night. I mean, these are facts that we have to go through in our communities. And the kids are becoming depressed. And I just, you know, it kind of wrenches my heart. And it's almost like you want to you wanna hug them and reach out. But it's almost like they're so isolated now because they're taught to keep their walls up because they have to be so hard because now they're the breadwinner. Right. You know what I'm saying? If you're giving your mom enough to help pay, you know, the rest of her rent and food for your little sister and your little other brother, and you're maybe like 12 to 13 years old, and you are becoming now the male of the house, literally, you know, that's a lot to put on a kid. Yeah, absolutely. That's a yes. lot, you know. And, yes. and we were talking about um, Indeed. also uh, social values, meaning like, you know, uh, I think last week we talked about like seeing, you know, uh, psychiatrists and stuff like that, you know, and getting therapy and that, if that's not that big for us. But, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to hold the floor too long. I want to say, so what do you guys think about the children? Are, do you, can you see the children being depressed? 
Absolutely. Yeah. So yes. I was just watching a documentary the other day, and uh, it was talking about troubled kids. And one of your was the school in our neighborhood in this area to where as kids that were troubled kids would go and get, you know, some special help. That school is closed down. So those kids are pretty much spread abroad. They're in different schools. And so it's like, you know, you got a kid that you're trying to um, pave the way for or trying to teach good values and that sort, and then they're approached by these type of kids. So I can totally see that. That's why you have so many kids commit suicide, and it's mm -hmm. like they, it's like kids don't mm -hmm. feel like they're they're being helped. You know, mm -hmm. it's only so much a parent can do. So after I do what I need to do, now my kid is in school, and I'm expecting the, the teachers, the principals, the security to protect my town. That's not happening. Mm, good connection. I didn't, you know what? <clears throat> kind of just flew over our heads. Very strong point. Depression is basically the trigger for a lot of these kids committing Absolutely. suicide or talking about Absolutely. it. I know there's one of the biggest things that now is a threat. Um, and I know a personal friend of mine who her child has always often said, well, I'm just going to go commit suicide. I'm tired. I can't take it anymore. I'm going to go. And so it's like a third time. Yeah, so now... Like, I mean, is, is it, when are we going to call the bluff? When is it really going to happen? So it's almost like, you know, you're on pins and needles because your kid keeps using this as a threat until one day, what if the kid goes too far and actually does it? It happens. Be just because she's so depressed, she wants attention, she wants to lash out, and then she does something by taking a whole a bottle of pills, and it's too late. We can't bring her back. You see what I'm Absolutely. saying? Absolutely. Poetry Soul Child. Yes. What are your thoughts on um, depression with the children right now? Do you think... Um, obviously, we know it's real, right? Right. Yes. Um, let's talk about some answers. Is there anything we can do to reach out to the kids as adults? As as um, I wouldn't say activists. That's more of you know our platform. But as a, 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 someone who has connection with the youth, hmm. Um, someone that you can reach out to. Yeah, well, what are ways that we can do it? In fact, I think what you're doing is a really good platform. So yes. you can even use that, you know what I'm okay, saying? Okay, yeah. But what are some of the other ideas, if anything comes to mind? Because I'm, I'm telling you, there's always people at home who go hit my inbox later and say, man, that was a great show. Me and my son were watching it or, you know, me and my daughter and we want to know blah, blah, blah. So what are some of the things you can tell somebody right now who's a child? And that goes for you guys at home, too. What are some of the things we can tell our children if they are depressed? Mm. Because it's happening, y'all. This is deep, and, and we have to reach out to these kids. You know, we, this is our future. We can't give up. So what would you tell a child who's between the ages of 9 and 16 or 17 if they are depressed? What would be some things you'd say? What I would say? I would basically say this. Um, I would basically say, believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. Good one. Encourage yourself. Mm -hmm. Respect yourself. Care about yourself. Have faith in yourself. Mm -hmm. Trust yourself. Love yourself. Mm -hmm. Accept yourself. Enjoy yourself. That's a piece right there, bro. <laughs> Woo! Okay, okay. New piece coming out, so right. you gonna go home and start writing. <laughs> right. So that's my advice right. to you if you're going through depression. It was on a roll. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I said, I said, how far along are we gonna go to the rest of the show? Sin, yeah. Sin, what would be um, some of your you know advice to a young person if you was in a room by yourself and you already knew the situation and you walked into the room with this young sister? Mm -hmm. What well, some of the things you might tell them? Well, I think this young man couldn't have said it no better, and I respect and like mm -hmm. the fact that he said that, because that's what kids need. We, For the most part, kids just need someone to pour into them, show them love, give them words of aff affirmation, because most of the kids aren't. Like you mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. oh, you got kids outside that have to be the parent for their parents. Mm -hmm. And so they're out there, and they're doing everything under the sun. It's like no one's saying, you know what, it's going right. to be okay. Right. Let me give me a hug. Do this, do this. Right. And right. on top, and with that being said, I'm actually in the process of forming a non-for-profit called Heavenly Saint yes. Youth. Okay. To whereas I just want to empower kids, I want to give them different avenues, nice. and so I like the okay. fact that you said that you have poetry, mm -hmm. and so perhaps Thank I can push some of my kids. We can yes, come and, and you know mm -hmm. give them a chance to yes. express their shell, yes. show them something different. A lot yes. of times we so stuck, kids are just stuck in their environment. Yeah. So you, for the most part, you become what you see. Right. So until they are able to spread abroad and see different things, they become mm -hmm. depressed and, yeah. and all that other stuff. So yes. I just got this thing to I just like for my son, I just want to take him everywhere yes. and show him everything I possibly yes. can. Probably yes. 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 Okay. Got well going. yeah, well hey. we been no no we been oh. having calls. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? It's like when there's so many they have that's to That's probably our buddy. There. That's probably what's her name? <laughs> oh yeah, what's the guy? What's the guy? No, but we'll see, we'll see. Um okay, caller, you are on the air with each one teach one this Yulon Dot Life. Caller, are you there? Where you at, Carl? Yes, hello. Yes, speak up. 
Hello, this is Sherry. Hey, Sherry. How you doing? Hey, man? Sherry. Hey, Sherry. <laughs> I'm doing good. Huh? I have a solution to that question. All right. What you said to tell a child. The thing is, the parent, their parents have to be the first one to tell them. Once your parents is on your side and tell right. you something positive, you can go anywhere. When your parents put you down, I've seen so many parents beat up on their That's children. Mm -hmm. And it is so hard for another person to pick that child up. Interesting. But if your parents is behind you, you're good to go. Okay. So we parents need to get behind our children and be positive to them. All and right. listen to them. Listen to them. Talk to them. Mm. See what they're going through. Because if you positive to your child, if that child want to commit suicide or somebody doing something to him and they know their mother and father on their side, right. they're going to tell their parent. Right. They're going to tell their parent because they know they can go to their parent. But if that parent putting that child down just like the teacher and the kids at the school, he's going to shut down. Mm, very interesting. Thank you so much, Carla. Is that Lady Bass? Nice no, yeah, you know is that Lady Bass? Mm, no, you're yeah. thinking of Paula. No, that's Lady Bass. Oh, that's me. See, this thank you for calling Lady Bass. Okay. 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 Hey, all right. <laughs> <laughs> we have regulars, you know what I'm saying? We have some, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? Who is who? Another voice. Mm. <laughs> okay, well, listen. Um, Thank you so much, Carla. It was Sherry. Sherry. Lady Bass. Lady Bass. She played the, the baddest oh. bass player I know. Oh, I'm right doing her thing. Okay, okay, well, listen. That's very, that, you know what? I think this, one of the biggest things that she said, um, that kind of it, it hit me in a, in a way that was kind of hurting because she's right, is that um, she's saying if both of the parents, and I don't know, you, you guys um, on our live probably couldn't hear it. You may have. We could hear it good here, but where you are, you might not be able to hear it. But one of the things she was saying is it's up to the parents that if the parents are still close to the children, they're the first person that the child will really listen to because, like, say, for instance, something happens at the school. What's the first thing the child does? Runs home, mom, dad, something happened. So if the parents aren't encouraged and being that rock, that hardcore base, then, like, where does the kid go? And that leads me up to what I was saying about my heart last night is that if there are no parents in the house, meaning, say, for instance, the father's gone, locked up, on drugs, whatever, and the mother, instead of working, because now that's where we're at, the mother has to go, you know, get the money. But if the mother is on drugs too, there's no parents in the home. And I see that all the time. There's, there's no parents. So these are the kids who become a part of the system or, mm -hmm. you know, just out there, period, bouncing from friend house to friend house to friend house. Right. So who do these kids go to? You know, who are the ones that these kids really have to say, you know, um, man, good job. Look, don't be depressed because I got this for you. Matter of fact, if you get certain A's on your, you know, your report card, I hit you with it. You know, there's no encouragement. You're right. And so I think that's where really good, really good call. Appreciate that caller. You guys can still call in. We have a little time. 312-738-1060. Um, I want to ask you something real yes. quick. You know, poetry soul child. Yes. So... Say, for instance, your son, you know, imaginary son, 15 years old. Do you have a son 15? No. Not yet. <laughs> no, 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 okay, let's make a story. No, no, I want to say, well, you know, I do got a son 15. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, imaginary son, like I said, 15, mm -hmm. comes to you. Yeah. Now, he tells you, he actually verbally says, Dad, mm -hmm. I'm depressed. Okay. Um, I'm depressed because you're not with mom anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm depressed because... I feel like we don't spend enough time together. I'm mm. depressed because you told me already that you can't because you got to work to keep a roof over my head. Mm. Mm. What do you do? What would be some of the things you could say to kind of com combat that? Because these are real life situations that I hear that, you know, the kids tell me. Wow. You know, my dad works so much that he don't have time for me. Wow. What would be something you could tell? In fact, That's you think deep. about it for a second. Okay. Let's reverse That's it real deep. quick. Daughter, you never had. Same thing. She calls you mom. I know you work on, but I don't have no time. I'm, I'm depressed. Um, ah, geez, Louise. Of course, I sit down and talk to her and see, you know, what the try to get to the root of the problem, and then moving forward, I will have her write a journal every day of her events or what makes her depressed, right, what makes right. her happy, and then I will try to, um, uh, of course, pour into the happiness and try to, you know, shower with love, take her place. Same thing what I pretty much do with my son. Mm -hmm. To whereas I, I think I don't, I don't mind as a devil's workshop. Mm -hmm. And like the caller said, if you don't have parents that's involved in the kid's life, it's easy for kids to go astray. But I think as long as you're on top of your kid, there's no room for that because your kids see that you're providing and, and you want the best for them and, right. and you're, you're showering them with this and, you know. So, I, I, it starts at home. Mm -hmm. It starts at home. 
Okay. It's definitely starts out. Really good. Um, and so I'm going through that something too with like three different people. Actually, one of That's them deep. is in one of my programs and you know him he's on house arrest wow. and so he don't get to go anywhere you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. you know really close to me like a son and my biggest thing with him is don't give up because mm -hmm. like you said and you said the same thing i said an idol mind is a devil Absolutely. Devil, you know saying devil's playground meaning if you sit in one place and everything has to come to you and you have no mobility no movement or anything you start kind of like you know but you got to be strong that's true you have to be strong yes. you know what i'm saying so I'm with them 100%. I can't, you know what I'm saying? It's bigger than what people think, you know what I'm saying? Because you got to be that strong rock Absolutely. for someone in that situation, you know what I'm saying? Get back to I ain't forgot about you. I ain't forgot about you. So, yes. young man, yes. what would you tell your... And we're not even going to say imaginary son, because one day you are going to be a yes, great father, will. a good, a really good dad, and I'm proud of that. Thank you. What would you um, tell your son? I would tell my son... Um, Man, dude, you ain't gonna tell for me. G, straight up, G, I'm not with it, G. What you gonna do? Man, I'm depressed. Man, I but, kill myself. Seriously, what you gonna but do? But I would spend time with my son more mm -hmm. than, than work because, you know, I feel like family is first. That's true. Mm -hmm. You know, I would give my son something that my dad didn't give me because, um, actually, my dad wasn't really in my life. Okay. So, you know, I, I would want something better for my son than what my dad did for me, mm -hmm. you know. So, I would try to be more in his activities that he's having at school. I would try to be more taking him out places and doing less work. Like, mm -hmm. cause I feel like family is first. Family, yes, you know, sir. comes first more than work because some people take their jobs more than their family and, and their kids. So I just feel like, you know, by me working with the youth, you know, I, mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, He's my first priority in my life. You're going to be a great dad. Oh, right. that's so man. nice. Oh. Thank right. you. Right. <laughs> well, we're going to keep it going real quick. Um, I just want to throw something real quick to the table. and We're going to really, uh, wrap things up. As you know, each week we're here. And um, we're going to uh, tackle this season, you know, our issues in our community and relationships, everything that we're dealing with. It. Yes. So today is depression. Now, let's say, for instance, that you do have these talks mm -hmm. with your children, right? Mm -hmm. With your mate. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you find out what we call our triggers, some of the things that may have led up to that, right? Um, and a year later, you know, the triggers start again. Um, and this time it's going to be a little harder because I just need people to understand something. Depression is real. Depression is a trick of the enemy. Please understand through prayer. It's really strong. If you are not a prayer uh, warrior, you can still go other places and get you know people to pray for you. Um, always reach out to us. We don't have our overhead to dad and bring it in, but you can reach us at 312-834-8020. That's our personal line, 312-834-8020. Um, you could also go to ulon.life and you know we'll back it up. If you're not even a believer, you know, don't worry about it. I mean, we'll still be there for you just That's person true. to person. I don't want you to get discouraged, okay? For you guys at home. Hit, go to ulon.life and let you know all the information. Hit contact. You know, we'll definitely hit you. So, safe answers and get back right on track real quick. So, somebody does not want to accept, you know, the triggers. They're still depressed and they're going through whatever. Um, what would you say, Cynthia, to somebody, uh, a child or a significant other, um, that maybe it just, it's a second round, it's a year later, and they're still going through it? They might have cleared up for some months, you know, but they're going back through it. Um, after I uh, did everything I possibly can, my I always fall back to counseling because counseling has helped me through. I mean, a lot of people don't have people to really talk to and open up to. Um, so I would always say we would have to go to counseling after I did all I could. Nice. And you know what? Don't be, don't be ashamed of counseling. Counseling has never been, for, you know, we never thought it was for us and it was always for other people. But now we are starting to see counseling. And you can get free counseling. Just look into it. Real quick. Oh, man, talk. you guys, when we're having fun, you know, the show goes real know, fast. Right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> real quick, shout outs for you. Anybody you want to, you know, give it up to real quick? Yeah, I want to shout out all of my fans and supporters and my family that's watching right now. Thank y'all for always supporting me. And, um, man, um, I just thank these people right here for having Aww, me on the show. Well, thank right. you. No thank this young person right here because I work right. with the youth, you know. With the fresh cut. That's, that's right. right. <laughs> with the fresh cut. Um, Cynthia, real quick. As always, I don't, um, 
I thank God first, my family. Um, I thank you for allowing me this platform. My son, I keep him everywhere I go. And uh, my cousin, Juanita, who's always listening to That's me. That's what's up. Yeah. Hey, real quick, I just want to say, man, all the U-Lons across Chicago out there doing the thing from my west side U-Lons to the south side to the north side, man. I love you guys. To my people with my headquarters, you know, my boy Chris, easy. Um, even my boy DT, you know, his cuzzo, you know what I'm saying? Everybody out there, man, I love y'all. I just want to say, man, again, keep up the good work. u life. we out here. Each one, teach one, and don't stop there. Holla. Holla. Holla.